So in this video, we want to look at uh, importing uh, PDF drawings and then extracting uh, PDF data or extracting CAD data from these PDF drawings. So the easiest thing to, to do to get PDF data into Trimble Business Center is basically just to drag and drop the PDF file into this main plan view. So they'll go in pretty quickly. They'll basically just drop into whatever your current view is. So if you've got existing data then and that's where you're zoomed into, then they will basically just drag straight on at the incorrect scale. So there's there's no scale information saved in a vector PDF drawing. So the minimum that we need to do is to give the PDF, um, give TBC some scale information. If we if we're just taking areas and so on to do a quick uh, takeoff, then that's all we need. We need to get the scale right, but it is uh, convenient to get the orientation right. So if I just turn off the TBC grid lines, if we had any existing grid lines, then I could use those to get an orientation to north. We could use a, a north arrow, but it'd be pretty rough because it's a, a pretty small, um, that's a pretty small line that we'd be using. We can also georeference the PDF drawings if we've got some existing coordinates. But if I just wanted to um, scale it, then I can just go to known distance. I can say distance, and if I zoom in, I can see a section of road here that's uh, 80 meters long. And I can say, OK, that section is straight for at least 80 meters. So I'll obviously want a straight line as long as possible to get the scaling as accurately as possible. And I can just zoom in. And then you can see before I click, you can see that it's actually TBC. You can see the crosses there. It's jumping onto. I'm not happy with the location just snapping onto in the PDF file. So I'm just going to choose right click and I'm going to choose free. And I'm just going to get right in the middle of that um, 80 meter mark. And then I can just hit compute and the drawing will now be scaled. So that distance um, is going to be 80 meters in TBC. So I can just close this and I can choose to just do an independent check. It's always a good idea. I can go up to the top and choose measure. And I can see that I've got a 30 meter straight section of road up here. And we can just check that. And we can see it's within five mil, which is probably not normally going to be as good as that. Now, if I just wanted to go and ch start checking sizes, then I can obviously do that. So if I wanted to check, for instance, the road width here, it's not snapping onto any entities, but it's just, I can see that that's a five and a half meter road. Um, and I can continue to take sizes from this, but it's going to be easier for me to run an extraction of the data into, into a CAD entities. But before I do that, I want to show you how to georeference the data. So what we could do with this file is I could right click, go to the Project Explorer, go to Imported Files and choose Georeference Vector PDF. But what I'm going to do is just delete it and show you the whole process from scratch. So what I have here is some known coordinates as a CSV file for some of the points in this file. So I'm just going to drag and drop those in as a CSV file, but obviously we could just go to CAD and key in point information if we wanted to. And this is just going to be point number easting level. Well, there's no level because it's 2D data. So it's just going to be point ID easting northern and a zero level. And I have two coordinates for this drawing. And I'm just going to push it to the left before I import the PDF again, because when I import the PDF, it will always come into the middle of the screen. So I'm going to import this PDF drawing again. So it just comes in as an image. That's all it is at the moment. And then I'm going to choose this uh, icon here, Georeference Vector PDF. And you can see what I'm given is basically I need to identify a pixel. So I know that I've been given a drawing that I know the corner of that fence corner relates to that location that I've keyed in. So you can see it just automatically populates. And then I can go to the second location, which is this fence corner here. 
and I know that that relates to this position here. And then I can just choose register. And now, instead of it being in local grid, what we now have is it's in full national grid. So when I'm moving my cursor around, you can see the bottom right-hand corner of the screen is in full national grid coordinates. So now I have it fully georeferenced, and I can just hit close. Before I do that, I also have this option now to choose import vector PDF data, which can be done at any stage. And at this, if I run this command, then it will automatically try and extract all of these uh, vector, or all of the PDF uh, data into CAD entities. Obviously, we have some settings which are fairly straightforward. They're self-explanatory, really. Main one here is the vector PDF format does support um, the layers that the consultant engineers will have used for the drawings. Um, so most of the time, if we choose this, then we will actually see the, the layers that they've used, and it will make allow us to make more sense of the data. So if I just choose vector import vector PDF data, it typically takes um, it typically takes about um, a minute or so to do a or around a minute to do a file of this size to import the, the, the vector data. So we'll just let that run through. So I just stopped the video there for a second to let the the import complete or the extraction complete. We can close here. And what we see is we see all the CAD data that's been extracted, and we can see that it's extracting the text um, as well. And you can see that it's actually doesn't necessarily keep it in the same location when we're extracting text, but you can see it's mostly clever enough to actually read the text. So we can see that it's actually read that as legend. Now, what we still have here is the actual image in the background. So we can go to View Filter Manager, and we can turn it back on if we need to. But most of the time, we can just get rid of this. And we can see on my layers, I have my own layering system but as layering groups. But in my raw layers, then I can see that it's preserved all the layering that's been used by the consultant engineer. So we can see road, road symbol, road text, spot level. So we can turn the layers on and off as we, as we want. Um, a lot of the time, there's no need to turn off layers that we just want rid of. So if I want to clean up some of this stuff, I can just go into select similar and select it. And I'm just going to clean up a lot of this stuff just to, and I don't need the contours for this operation. And we can see that we've got something that looks much cleaner already. So if I wanted to, Check sizes now because it's card data. Then it's uh, I can snap to things. It's still not going to be perfect, but because it's still coming from the same data source. So if I do this check in the distance, then I can see that it's 22 mil um, off the 30 meters. So it's still we still have, you know, it's ideal for doing things like tenders, but it's not certainly what I'd want to be using when we're getting to setting out. Now. I can check sizes, I can check areas. Um, so if I want to select uh, the outside of that house, then we can see that it gives me an individual area. What I can do is I can name it. So if I just say that's name is 15, and if I just choose that one there and say that this one is 16, so we can we can query them individually. Any closed, fully enclosed uh, polygon will be able to just view the area. What's nice about going in and naming fully enclosed areas is if I just go in here and just close this one again, and I can say that that one's 14. Then I can just quickly uh, rattle round, and of course I could do it. Uh, I could do it um, in the entire. So if I just select that layer and say view only layers, then I could just say, okay, what's the area of all my house foundations? I could go to takeoff. I could go to my um, area length count report, and I could say, I'll just I could choose to load the data straight into Excel. I'll just put it as a report, and obviously lots of options here, and I can just hit apply, 
and you can see that it's going to load up a report which will give me the area of all of these entities and it will also any that I've named, it will put in the report as individual entities as well. So I can see everything in the one report. So it's a very handy report. So I can see the total area here is 3,417 square meters. And then at the top, the plots I've, I've named, I've got these individually put into my uh, report. So, and then I've got all these unnamed areas as well. So that, as you can tell from the name, area length count report can be used for other things. I'm certainly not recommending that these are the most efficient ways for doing um, areas or, or curb counts or anything. But for certainly an initial user, it can be very useful to be able to do the basics very quickly. So if I wanted to just do a basic curb count around here, then I could just select these areas. And again, I could run area length count report and hit apply. And again, it would just basically give me, instead of an area, it's going to give me a length um, for all of these selected items. And obviously for things like manholes, then we could select them all and get a count on how many manholes there are. So we can, it's a very easy way to get introduced to takeoff and TBC. So we can see here the length of what I've selected there and the individual breakdown of that. One of the, when we're doing areas, one of the, Pesky things sometimes is some of the areas that we may want might not be defined as a closed polygon in their own right. So for instance, if I wanted to get this uh, area here, um, I don't have it because it's actually delineated by other, other areas. So there's a very useful command, which is in CAD, and it's also in the data prep command called track region. You can name it, so or you don't need to name it, but if I just choose footpath, M17, I can put it into a new layer if I want. So I can put, I'll just create a new layer and I'll just call it uh, areas and close that. And then what we can say is select the lines that we want to delineate this uh, here. And you can see they go well beyond and I can basically say, if they don't perfectly form closed lines, I can say, look, as long as they're within 200 mil of closing a line, and then I can choose an interior point. And you can see it creates a closed polygon for me, and it gives me the area. And of course, that's also put off to my individual layer that I've called areas. And then because it's named, so if I look at the properties, I can see that it's footpath 17. So when I go to my takeoff report and do my area length count report then it will actually be nicely named when i actually export it so it's a very simple way to start doing areas in tbc and it could be straight from pdf so it could be from any cad data for if i want to proceed and do a full takeoff report from here on in then i can just look at the videos that cover that because essentially it's exactly the same whether the CAD data is coming as a CAD file from the client or whether it's actually coming from a PDF. So we, I'd refer you to those videos.